This is the video for D3.1 on reproduction. This is higher level content related to gamete production. We'll end up separating male and female gamete production in a bit, but one of the things that they have in common is this path towards puberty, okay? So puberty is really going to be kicked off um, by a hormone that comes from the hypothalamus called GNRH. GNRH stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone, and again, it comes from the hypothalamus, which is in the brain. The hypothalamus is in a special relationship. It's connected to the pituitary and GNRH causes the pituitary to release two hormones of its own, LH and FSH. Those hopefully sound familiar to you. They stand for luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. In males and females, the effect of GA or LH and FSH are different. In males, this has an effect on the testes, okay? So these pituitary hormones cause the testes to release testosterone. And in males, that testosterone is going to um, stimulate sperm production, penis enlargement, growth of pubic hair, and other secondary sex characteristics. In males, or in females, LH and FSH are going to act on the ovaries, and they're going to stimulate the ovary to release estradiol. And this is going to be a type of estrogen, and that is going to cause puberty in females, which will result in the development of the follicle during the ovarian cycle, the enlargement of the uterus, the growth of pubic hair, breast growth, and other secondary sex characteristics. When we say gamete production, we're talking about a process called gametogenesis, but really that's just general. We'll probably most likely be using the specific terms for males and females. In males, the process of gamete production is called spermatogenesis. This is the development or production of gametes. Okay, specifically, it's going to produce spermatozoa, which will mature later into sperm. Oogenesis is the production of oocytes, okay, which will mature into eggs. Both of them follow the same stages, okay? So we'll be noticing that they start with mitosis, there's a time of cell growth, meiosis one and two, and then differentiation. We'll start with spermatogenesis first. This is going to take place in the testes, specifically in a structure called the seminiferous tubule. So in the inside the testes is this um, group of tubules, the seminiferous tubules. And if we look at a cross section of one, I'll try to outline one here for you. So here's a cross section through one of the seminiferous tubules in the testes. This is the tubule part, right? So you can imagine going through this. Um, this will occur from puberty onward. So spermatogenesis for males starts in puberty. The cells lining the um, seminiferous tubules um, are called the germinal epithelium. So I'll kind of outline that here in blue. So they're going to be around here on the periphery. And these germ cells are so cool. They can do mitosis or meiosis. So they're going to undergo mitosis a bunch of times to produce a lot of cells. And then those new cells are going to grow a bit. During puberty, when sperm production needs to take place, those germinal epithelial cells, instead of undergoing mitosis, will undergo meiosis to produce four haploid cells. Those four haploid cells are then going to attach to a special type of cell called a Sertoli cell, which I'll show you in a minute, while they differentiate and grow and develop into sperm. So we'll be able to see them here. And then these little things poking out in here are the developing sperm. So here's a clearer view of that, right? So this is just a very small section. Imagine this seminiferous tubule cross section going all the way around, okay? Here are those germinal epithelial cells. They are capable of undergoing mitosis to create more of themselves, or they can undergo meiosis one and two, and I end up with four haploid cells, right? 
These haploid cells um, aren't mature sperm yet. They need to grow, they need to differentiate, they need to develop structures like a tail and the acrosome and all these things. And while they are doing that, they are going to attach to these giant cells called Sertoli cells. So we can see that attachment here. They're going to use this cell kind of like a nursery um, to gain nutrients um, and that kind of thing as they are developing. It's not uncommon to find pictures of micrographs of cross sections of seminiferous tubules on exams. So be on the lookout for these giant cells. Those are the Sertoli cells and the developing sperm that are attached to them. They'll be pointing these tails will be extending in towards the center of that seminiferous tubule. Here's a mature sperm, and we'll talk about some of the features of this, okay? Going all the way around the outside here, all the way, is the plasma membrane. And I know that seems like, why is that important? Well, it will be later when this sperm wants to fuse with the egg, okay? So that's important to know the plasma membrane extends all the way around the outside. Here we have the flagellum, okay? So flagellum... Um, some people refer to that as the tail. It's really a flagella. In the middle of the sperm is an area called the midpiece, okay? And inside of the midpiece are several mitochondria. And if you think about what the sperm has to do, wow, it's got a lot of swimming to do to get all the way up to that egg in the oviduct. So it's going to need to generate lots of ATP. The sperm also then has the head, and inside the head are a few features that we should talk about. One is the acrosome. This is full of enzymes, which we'll talk about later. We have the haploid nucleus. So if this were humans, that would have 23 chromosomes inside. And then it has a centriole. It's not really important really for our discussion, but just so you know, it's gonna help move this nucleus around um, when it needs to. And now we'll move on to oogenesis. This is going to occur in the ovaries. And unlike males where it's all happening just puberty and onward, this is going to happen in two main stages. It's going to actually start before birth. So before a female is even born, she begins the process of oogenesis. Here's a cross section of the ovary, and just like with males, around the periphery is this germinal epithelium. Those are those special cells capable of undergoing mitosis or meiosis. So just like with males, they will undergo mitosis many times to produce lots of cells, and those cells will grow. Those cells before birth will undergo meiosis one, and they'll become these primary oocytes. The name so much isn't important right now, but what is important is understanding that this um, germinal epithelium, it's arrested in meiosis one right before birth, and it won't finish meiosis, it won't do meiosis two until the menstrual cycle. So this is happening during puberty. So meiosis one, before birth, the rest of the gamete production or oogenesis will resume during uh, puberty. So during each menstrual cycle, one of these primary oocytes will differentiate or will be selected um, to start differentiating. It'll develop a follicle, it will undergo meiosis two, and it will eventually differentiate into a mature ovum. So here's a closer look at that. Again, in case you need to see that, we're starting with the germinal epithelium. We go through meiosis one, and then we start meiosis two um, during the menstrual cycle. And the mature ovum is going to have several features that we should point out. So in the sperm, we started with the plasma membrane. Let's do the same thing for the egg, and that is right here, okay? So this plasma membrane is what the sperm's plasma membrane will fuse with um, during fertilization. All right, let's go on the inside then. Okay, so on the inside of the plasma membrane is the actual cell, and then we're going to find, just like with the sperm, that there is a haploid nucleus here. And there's this other really weird thing, this blue thing over here, what's this doing? This is something called the polar body. So it is the remnants of unequal um, division of the cytoplasm during meiosis. 
inside of the uh, cell here, so on the inside of this plasma membrane, we're going to find cytoplasm. So you can see that this egg, this mature ovum, has much more cytoplasm than the poor little polar body. And one of the things that we'll find in the cytoplasm is yolk. And this is what the uh, what supplies the energy for the developing embryo if it is fertilized. On micrographs, if you're looking at an egg, you'll actually be able to see these like quite large granules. Um, and these are something called cortical granules, cortical granules. They are going to be really important later. So we'll save their function um, for just a couple of moments. On the outside of the plasma membrane is a space called the zona pellucida. Zona pellucida, okay? And again, we'll talk more about that function later, so I'll leave that to your imagination for right now. And on the outside are these layers of cells. These are remnants of the primary follicle that developed around the um, ovum in that ovarian cycle. So you'll see some uh, texts reference that as follicular cells. You may also see it referred to as the corona radiata, love a little Latin, okay? So corona, almost like a crown, right? So this, these are layers of follicular cells. Let's sum up gametogenesis by, prepare, by comparing spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So oogenesis is going to take place in the ovaries, whereas spermatogenesis takes place in the testes. Um, let's see, the timing. Um, oogenesis starts before birth and then continues during the menstrual cycle. Um, spermatogenesis takes place or it starts during puberty and it continues continuously onwards. Um, oogenesis produces about one, um, in humans, one mature ovum per month, whereas spermatogenesis produces millions and millions per day. In spermatogenesis, all four of those haploid cells produced by meiosis can differentiate into mature sperm. But due to the unequal division of the cytoplasm in oogenesis, that meiosis process can only produce one mature ovum. And whereas the sperm has very little cytoplasm, only what it needs to get through the female reproductive tract, the mature ovum produced by oogenesis will have a lot of cytoplasm um, to both aid in fertilization and nourish the developing embryo.